so the animals would say, work less, think less, be in nature more, and your energy is naturally going to be more loving to the point where you become nothing but love. It's all simple. And to stop killing them. Absolutely no, no creature wants to be killed and eaten. Hello, fine viewers, and welcome to Animal World, our co-inhabitants. On today's program, we present the conclusion of our two-part interview with Sharon Callahan, a vegan telepathic animal communicator, author, and expert in the use of flower essences to correct physical and emotional imbalances in animals. Ms. Callahan, who is based in Mount Shasta, California, USA, is the founder of Anaflora, a company that offers natural healing agents and animal communication services. An author as well, she has written Healing Animals Naturally with Flower Essences and Intuitive Listening. Did you know each animal has a specific mission in life? Sharon Callahan now explains further. And, you know, if you walk down any um, neighborhood street and you see a cat or dog in the yard and you're sensitive, you can see that they're doing something very special. You know, the dog is guarding the yard, the cat is monitoring energies and things. Um, so to me, every animal is performing a real sacred ministry. Um, they're all service animals, an example to us that we should all be of service. And again, hopefully one day, um, someone will take into account really listening to the animals and what their particular gift of service is. And dolphins heal whether we're having them do that or not, they are love. And that love goes where it's needed. Through her many years of experience as an animal communicator, Miss Callahan has learned that all of our fellow beings are models of devotion and love. However, she says that whales are unique in this respect. They aren't loving, they are love. And I think it's one of the reasons that whales are as big as they are, because there's a lot of love there moving in the oceans. Um, I feel Master Ching Hai is absolutely correct that I feel without whales in the ocean, we wouldn't still be here. They, they hold such a vibration of love that it makes up for um, what we're so sorely lacking. So they are love. They absolutely are, are love incarnated. They look upon us as children, the newcomers on the earth. I mean, in earth time, human beings have only been here about four minutes. If you look at the whole span of, of uh, earth and how it's evolved. And so they think of us as, as kind of children that don't know what we're doing. They have tremendous compassion for us. Never anger, ever, even if we harm them. Um, tremendous compassion. Um, they'd like us to hurry up a little bit because we're really ruining things. But uh, very much compassion like a mother would show a child. And the reason that we're ruining things, ruining the earth, ruining the environment, ruining our own bodies, is that we've simply separated ourselves out from the animals. For one thing, we forget that we are animals also. We're a human animal so that we've separated ourselves from the animals, from the plant life, from the earth itself. Um, we think way too much. The ego's the problem. And, and people misunderstand often what the ego is. It's simply the judging mind that says, this is a dog, this is a cat. Um, but it's that part of our mind that judges everything and, and then causes artificial separation from everything that is. And literally, there's no distance between us. It's all illusory. And so it's the, the ego self that gets in the way, absolutely, of 100% love. On occasion, groups of dolphins suddenly beach themselves and perish, or thousands of fish die all at once. We asked Miss Callahan to comment on these troubling events. The ocean has become poison. Anything that lives in the ocean is just screaming because it's polluted, it hurts their eyes, it's, it's incredibly noisy. 
almost to the point where it drives them crazy. It absolutely may be that a certain group of fish, for instance, simply can't stand to be in the ocean anymore. It's like being in a sea of poison, and so they all leap out. But, but I think for all of the um, species that disappear from the earth, they're disappearing for one reason only, because we don't love them enough. We don't love them enough to do what's right. We're not loving them, we're not considering that that's their home, and that it was also our home. We came out of the ocean, and I feel that dolphins really are, are, they're the ocean people. They're the people that didn't come out when dolphins beach themselves somewhere. It's not by accident, and it's not that they're sick, and it's not that they can't find their way. It's that it often brings out the best in people. It brings people into their hearts. People go to help. It's often that that particular area of the world needs an infusion of love, and they're willing to sacrifice themselves to give that. And so whales and dolphins and other, you know, incredibly brilliant animals of the sea wish we would just not think so much, that we would let the energy settle into our hearts to become love. Humankind can also learn an important lesson from the peacocks. Peacocks are very interesting because there's a legend in Hinduism that all peacocks began white. And you know, peacocks can eat things that are poison and it doesn't hurt them. So the legend is that peacocks roam the world eating up the poison, and the eating of the poison gives them the color. And a peacock also stands for enlightenment. So to me, a peacock is not, not only a fantastic um, image for the enlightened state, but it's also what we should be doing. We need to go clean up our mess. We need to go out into the world and eat up those poisons that we put out. You know, not literally taking it into our body, but doing the cleanup work. And we can. If everybody did it, we'd have it cleaned up in no time. So peacock is a wonderful example of that. Sharon Callahan has always loved animals and been sensitive to any violence against them. She decided to try to become a vegetarian at age five after realizing the packages sold at a meat counter were parts of animals. Today she avoids all animal products. And um, then the veganism, it wasn't a decision. It was just simply a change of vibration in my system that wouldn't, wouldn't allow anything that caused harm. And I've gone for periods of time just on uh, fruits and nuts and things, and um, it's a wonderful thing to try because you see that you're just fine. Mm. So there's a whole um, evolution that to me happened beyond thought and beyond time. And uh, it wasn't a decision, it was just a natural flow of uh, heart opening and where I wanted to go. I think it goes beyond even what we eat. That we should every day, when, the minute we wake up, say that I will walk through this day doing as least harm as possible. Got a beloved uh, group of uh, friends who are vegan. And so on Thanksgiving in particular, and often Christmas as well, we all get together in the evening and we prepare our vegan meal. It's always at my friend Eric's home. And the wild turkeys that live in the woods behind his house will literally come in the backyard off of the, the dining room where we're eating and strut and dance and do this joyful, joyful thing because they know that we're honoring them. And, and of course, we feed them. We offer them food, and we don't never eat a turkey. <laughs> Ms. Callahan not only advocates that everyone follow a plant-based diet, but also that our animal companions be provided with vegan food as well. When I moved to Mount Shasta 30 years ago, I had Siberian Huskies, and they were all vegetarian. And my oldest one was 15, which is for a Husky very, very old. They did fine. 
and they would savor things like a little slice of avocado, um, a carrot, uh, quinoa, rice. So as the animals evolve and as we help them evolve by creating a sacred atmosphere for them, giving them appropriate non-meat food, um, we can accelerate the change that they're going through. With accelerating climate change driven by animal agriculture and a host of other enormous challenges we are currently facing, this is the most crucial period in our planet's history. Adopting a plant-based diet is the most important decision we can make. I, th I feel that the entire Earth is, is like almost encapsulated in like a fog or cloud of suffering that certainly includes the suffering of human beings, but more than anything, the suffering that animals are, are the, that are killed by the millions every day, that energy of the suffering that they go through stays in a kind of band around the earth. So that if enough people became, you know, vegetarian and then vegan, we, we would begin to dissipate that energy by, by simply balancing it. It hits me profoundly that when every night when I go to sleep, millions of animals are just dying this horrendous death. In the daytime, you're doing other things. You can distract yourself with your work. But to me, sometimes I can't sleep when I think about it. But if, if we change, and we must, if we're going to save ourselves, it would begin to help the earth to emit the light that she should. It would move through that band of suffering that surrounds the earth. It would envelop it with love and forgiveness and everything would change. I mean, literally it is the one thing that will save us. May heaven bless you, Sharon Callahan, for your kind efforts on behalf of our animal brethren and for sharing your insights on how we can heal both them and our world. You exemplify love and compassion. May you help many more people understand the animal's deep, profound love for humankind and the importance of the vegan lifestyle. For more information on Sharon Callahan and Anaflora Floral Essences for Animals, please visit www.anaflora.com. Miss Callahan's book, Healing Animals Naturally with Flower Essences and Intuitive Listening, is available at the same website. Thank you, gifted viewers, for your warm-hearted presence today on Animal World, our co-inhabitants. May all beings, large and small, soon live in harmony and peace in a vegan world. For more details, please see www.suprememastertv.com forward slash AW.